In this video, I'll show you how to create multicolored moving sprites for TFT and OLED displays. The TFT display I'm using in this tutorial is the 0.96 inch ST7735S. It has a 160 by 80 pixel display and cost me the equivalent of just over 6 US dollars on eBay. I'll also be using an Arduino Uno microcontroller. It's a little bit underpowered for this kind of thing, but it can be done. I don't know how feasible it is to make an actual playable video game on an Arduino. However, the primary goal of this project was to simply make a realistic video game display to put in my Lego Bro Thor apartment. Maybe this will impress girls so much Thor will actually find a girlfriend. In your dreams. Or maybe not. I started this project trying to make a replica of Manic Miner, a classic 1980s UK video game produced for the 8-bit Sinclair Spectrum. However, after making this prototype I switched to making a version of Donkey Kong. This game and its iconic Mario character are much more globally recognised. I also switched to making graphics especially scaled for the tiny TFT display. In this video I show you how I rendered multicoloured Mario on the screen and made him move across the girders. The princess in the top right corner was rendered using the same technique but I haven't managed to animate her yet. Incidentally, the fireballs and fire are animated using a different technique which I'll cover in another video. If you're new to Arduino displays, then I recommend the monochrome SSD1306 OLED. Here it's the one on the right of your screen. It requires just 4 wires to get up and running, while the 7735S uses 7 wires. Having said that, I personally had less grief getting the colour TFT display working. It actually turned on the first time I connected it up to the Arduino. By comparison, the 1306 was a load of hassle. This tutorial is kind of advanced, at least as far as the coding goes, so check my other videos if you've not programmed a TFT display before. Here's a table showing how to connect up the Arduino Uno to the ST7735S display. Note that some of the pin codes here might actually be slightly different on your own display. This was certainly the case when I was using the 1306 display. BLK is unused by the way. After you've upwired your Arduino, it's time to upload a sketch and see if it works. So in the Arduino software, you need to go to Sketch and Include Library and then Manage Libraries. And the first thing to search for is GFX. After a few seconds it should appear. So you need to make sure that the Adafruit GFX library is installed. It will say installed here if it is. If it isn't, then just select the version and click on install. The second one we need is the ST77 library. If you search for that, it should appear. Yeah, okay, so the precise one you need is the Adafruit ST7735 and ST7789 library. So you can see I've also installed this one. Once you've installed this one, you can go to the menu, where is it, lost it, okay, right, so you go to examples, and then you can scroll down to Adafruit ST7735 and 89 library, and then click on graphics test, just the graphics test one. So if you go to sketch and then upload it will show you a demonstration on the TFT screen. So hopefully you'll see this display on your own Arduino if you've wired it up correctly. Initially I felt a little let down by the screen. I thought it'd be really easy to display a full colour image on the screen. However, the function draw bitmap and draw pixel will only allow you to specify a specific individual colour. Does this mean we can't have full colour games? Not at all! In the next part of this tutorial, I'll show you how I extensively modified the graphics test code, making heavy use of draw pixel and draw bitmap to make the moving color game. If you want my actual code, I'll make it available via a link in the description below. So my code is based on the Adafruit graphics test. I commented out a lot of their functions, but most of the top is the same. If you connect your display and it doesn't work, the first thing to do is to check these pins here. You might have to Google it to find some more information, but apparently you may sometimes have to change these numbers. There are various board types as well here which are commented out, but I had to uncomment this one here, the SS35. The first issue I had with my display was when I turned it on, all the colours were wrong. So cyan was green and 
magenta was blue and I can't remember the exact things but yeah everything was screwed up so much credit to the Arduino forum user that sorted this out for me so basically I have defined these colors here and these are the constants that I use through my code for the actual colors I use them in preference to the constant st77xx underscore color name because they were giving the wrong colors on my own particular TFT screen. So next I define a constant uh, start underscore position. So this is a vertical. Uh, normally I think these displays are upright like in the portrait position but here I use mine in the horizontal position for this game. So by defining the start position, it means that we can shift the entire screen up and down for a particular display. Here are the definitions of the static bitmaps I use throughout the screen. So I've got one for girders, ladders, oil drums and the fire. Also there's the fireball which I tried to get moving but I gave up with that. These images are all bitmaps or PNGs that were converted using Image2CPP. I don't know if you found this website, but I'll link it to the description below. So you basically just browse for an image and there's various settings here and you get a preview here and generate code. You get the code which you can just copy and paste into your sketch. Note that these are only monochrome images, but they're fine for these static images in our project. So I used image to CPP for these bitmaps and you can see they're quite small ones. The red girders are just an 8x8 array of pixels. So now we get on to Mario and the princess and the barrel, which are all actual sprites. So the way I've done this is to define a static char and I've given it the length here. This length is actually one character longer than the actual string itself. So this string will be 271 characters long. But I've given it an array. Apparently you need to leave a zero at the end of an array in C. I must just point out that in my day job I'm a C-sharp programmer and I do web development. So I'm still quite very much a noob at C. I'll get on to what the actual numbers mean in a moment, but first I'll say that I started out using the string object, that string with an uppercase S. But after I added a third sprite, Mario would actually disappear, and I was getting some weird memory corruption errors. So after hunting around the internet, I realized that using strings is probably a really bad noob mistake and you shouldn't really use this string object at all if you're doing Arduino programming. So definitely do not use a string if you're doing this unless your characters are very, very small. Incidentally, even though we've got four sprites here, this sketch uses up about 50 or 60% of the Arduino memory. So if you've got larger scale games you want to do, then you probably have to use a larger thing than the Arduino Uno. So what do the numbers mean? Uh, the numbers basically 0 is black, 1 is blue, 2 is red and so on. They actually match the ZX Spectrum colors. Uh, 7 is white, uh, although I have added 8 which the Spectrum didn't have but 8 is orange. You could potentially use more colours, but I am after all making an 8-bit game, so I thought uh, 8 colours was enough for me. And what does the L do? The L signifies a new line. So it draws these pixels across the screen, and when it gets to L, it goes back to the start and draws another line. I'll show you that function a bit later on. One other issue I have with my screen is that the blacks and the whites were reversed. If this happens to you, you can play around with these settings here. You'll notice in the screenshots you may have seen earlier that there is a, like a sparkly band across this screen. I'm still not sure why that's happening but I'll probably play around with these settings a bit more and I might be able to solve it. If you do know how to solve it then please leave a comment below. Okay so I commented out various stuff as I was trying to get the colours working to start with. So now we call functions to set up the girders, the ladders and place the oil drum. Here I've commented this out, but if you try to debug something, then you can output the text on the screen. That's quite useful. So here I've made a function called place sprite, 
which I used to place the princess and the two barrels. Mario is handled differently, but the other sprites I've made are using this. So here we're getting towards the initialization of various variables. And you notice that the fire and the fireballs cycle between two different colors. That gives the impression of them flashing. Then I set up coordinates for Mario's starting position. I must admit, with this project, I got very confused about the X and Y positions because really the screen is being used the wrong way around. I also set a chart with the Mario direction. By default, he starts going to the right, but when he gets to the end, he will turn around and go left again. If you're smarter than me, then you might be able to make him jump over a barrel. That would look really impressive. Now we come to the program loop. Here there is a fire cycle counter, so every time the loop goes round it increments this value by 1, and if it gets to a certain value then it's reset to 0 again, at which point this routine will fire and it redraws the bitmap. I've actually used different values for here, that just avoids everything flashing at the same time, so they go out of sync which looks a bit more effective. So to put these static sprites on the screen, I just use tft.drawBitmap. You just feed in the Y position, the X position, feed in the bitmap code above. So for example, is one of these. Uh, the next two numbers are the actual size you want it, so you could actually scale the images. As I said earlier, draw bitmap can only use a single colour, so you feed in a colour, which here will be red or orange. So to draw Mario, I have used the place sprite function. This is a function I've written myself. So basically, it takes in the pixel data for Mario. It also handles placing the multicolored princess character. So there are three parameters, the Y position, the X position, and then the character data, which is the long string of characters. So it uses a for loop to iterate through the list of character data. As I explained earlier, if it meets an L, it changes and increments the line length. And the Y position goes down because 0, Y is at the bottom, and 80 is at the top. So if it meets an L, it makes a new line. If it doesn't, then it draws a pixel using the color from the individual chart value. So it gets color code from here. If you want to modify this code and put in more colors, then it's quite easy to do. You just need some constants for the values of the different colors. I think the TFT screen can display 65,000 colours. I'm still trying to work out the sprite masking. I've done very little game development. So as you can see with my Manic Miner game, the character wasn't masked properly and he ended up making a blur when he moved. For this reason I've made sure there is a border of the background colour, in which case I'm using black. So the background colour needs to be all around the character. So as for moving Mario, I don't think it's too complicated. We just move the X axis by one pixel every time in the cycle. I must admit I'm very impressed in how smooth the TFT screen's animation is. Compare that with the earlier screen grabs of the Spectrum games I've shown in this video and you'll see they're really jerky. That's because the Spectrum's graphics handling was not great really. Finally, at the end of the code there are some routines for placing the various static sprites. So place oil drum, there is only one oil drum displayed on the screen in the bottom left hand side. Place ladders, it places three groups of ladders, they're made by 8x8 eight eight pieces of ladder. The girders are a bit more complicated because I wanted them to go up or down in steps like they do in the real Donkey Kong game. So basically if the X position gets to a certain point then they go up or they go down by one pixel. And finally there is a platform for the princess to stand on. So still to do in the game, I didn't get round to animating the princess and sadly the screen isn't really big enough to put Donkey Kong himself on there. It would also be nice if I could animate the frames of Mario. I think there would be enough memory in the Arduino to be able to have two frames of him in both directions. There might also be some memory saving techniques I can use to only animate his legs rather than his entire body. When you're writing code for the Arduino Uno, then every byte matters. 
Let me know if you do anything cool based on this tutorial. Thanks for watching.